This is uh, the next video in our series, kind of diving deeper into branching processes. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at probability generating functions, which also are known just as uh, PGF. Uh, so PGFs, you might be familiar with MGFs, moment generating functions, very useful tool in probability. This is similar name and a pretty similar uh, overall uh, kind of structure, as you'll see. So we'll jump right into it. The definition of a PGF um, is given here. This is for a random variable x. I try to make the random variables capital so we can kind of tell, and the you know the timekeeping, no keeping variables is lowercase. Um, so we use this pi sign. We use this instead of P, because you have P for PGF, but we also have P for probability, so we just use pi. So if pi sub x, uh, sub capital X, this means the PGF of the random variable x, uh, with respect to this uh, kind of no keeping variable, uh, lowercase s, which is similar you know, to the MGF, where we have lowercase t as our kind of time keeping variable, the definition is the expectation of this time keeping variable s to the power of a random variable x. Um, this is a random variable, it's a you know, constant or lowercase uh, s to the power of a random variable x. It's a function of a random variable, ergo, you know, it's a random variable and we take the expectation of it. And you know, this looks pretty funky, you know, something raised to the power of a random variable, you don't see that too often. Um, what I like to do whenever I see a weird uh, expectation of a weird function, I like to kind of just expand it out right away. You, you may know this expansion by a bunch of different names. I know it by Lotus, Law of the Unthinking Statistician basically kind of taking, taking a weighted average of sort of um, all the different values of x, and, and you'll see what I mean in a second. We're also doing the discrete case here, because we're going to be using these for branching processes, um, which are discrete random variables, um, since it's counting the number of cells in a given generation. So if we just use Lotus to write this out, um, again, we're doing the branching process, so you know it kind of starts at 0, goes up to infinity, and uh, Basically, using Lotus, this becomes our definition, right? The probability that big capital X random variable takes on any small value X times S to the power of little x. And we can expand that even more. It's the probability that X equals zero, S equals zero. It's the probability that X equals one, S equals one. Probability that X equals two, X squared, da da da. And you kind of can, you know, basically I'm just plugging in, in this case I'm plugging in zero for little x and then zero up here for x, so probably x equals zero, s to zero, probably x equals one, s to the one, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's a little bit easier to look at, I think, when you um, sort, of, sort of can see it like this. It's called the PGF because the coefficient, if you have the, the PGF, if you have this, this function, the coefficient of s to the k is the probability that s e that x equals k. For example, in this case, the coefficient of s squared, so kind of the value that's attached to s squared is the probability that x equals two. So similar to the moment generating function, it can generate um, our, our probabilities. We're gonna see a couple other ways that it can do that. So this is the probability generating function. You might be like, this seems random, doesn't make sense. We're gonna get into kind of, kind of why it's useful. In this video, we're gonna talk about some properties. In a future video, we're gonna talk about why this can be very useful for branching processes. So let's start with property one. Um, so property one, we're just gonna go ahead and see what happens when we plug in zero. Okay, so this is saying the PGF of X, where we're plugging in zero for S. Um, and we can kind of see, this is nice why we did this expansion, what happens if we plug in zero for S? Well, in this case, zero, but to the zero, zero to the zero is one, anything to the zero is one. So we get P equals zero. And then in this case, we have S to the one, so zero to the one is zero, so this term goes away. This term we have zero squared, which is zero times, so that term goes away. So we're actually, all the terms other than the zero to the zero go away, so we get X, the PGF of X at zero is equal to the probability that X equals zero. This is a cool little property. You can use it, you know, if you want to quickly find the, you know, the probability that x equals zero. And also use this to make sure that you have a valid PGF. So, um, pretty interesting. Talk about property two. This one is a bit cooler. In this case, we're going to take uh, derivatives. We're going to take derivatives with respect to s, not s, not x. Taking derivatives with respect to s, like a snake. Um, 
So let's take uh, this first derivative. I have my little derivative marker there. Um, so again, it'll probably help if you, you know, are looking at, at this term, think about taking the derivative. S to the zero is gonna be one, no matter what. So the derivative of one, you know, th this term is not gonna have any S in it, so it goes away. So you're deriving a constant, which is zero. This term, you're gonna have S to the one, so you just have P of X equals one um, times S. Sorry, you're just gonna have P of X to the one because you're deriving s times p of x to the 1, the s goes away when you take the derivative, so you just have p of x uh, equals 1, plus, um, in this case, the derivative of s squared is 2s, so p x equals 2, 2s, yada, yada, yada. And what's cool is if we plug in 0 here, right, if we plug in 0 again for s, so every, everywhere I see an s, I'm going to put a 0. Oops. It's not. 20, it's 2 times 0. This term goes to 0. All the other terms, the higher order terms, are going to have s's in them. They're going to go to 0. And we're just left um, with p of x equals 1. So the first derivative, plug in 0, you get p of x equals 1. Let's see if that continues. Let's take the second derivative. So I have two marks there. Second derivative, uh, this term is long gone. This term becomes long gone because it's p of x, you know, you derive, you get p of x equals 1. That's a constant. Derive again, you get 0. This term, we're going to get 2 times p of x equals 2, because you're just deriving um, this term where you have s instead of 0. I, I put 0 in for s, but just imagine deriving s squared twice. You're going to get 2. Um, the next term we're going to have, so you can imagine up here we have s cubed. So the root of x, s cubed is 3s squared. The root of 3s squared is 6s. So I'm going to get 6s to p of x equals 3, yada, yada, yada. And again, if I plug in 0 for s, if I plug in 0 everywhere I see an s, I, oops, that should be 0. 6 times 0. Everything past this first term is going to go to 0 because I have higher order terms of s. They haven't been derived down to 0. So in this case, I'm going to have, you know, second derivative equals 2, um, uh, times p of x equals 2. Uh, if you consider this in general, you get this really cool result. Um, I'm going to use this n term, so taking like, I'm saying taking the nth derivative of the pgf of x, and you plug in 0, you are going to get uh, n factorial p of x equals n. Um, and this is more commonly read, we move the n over, just because we're generally solving for the probability. Um, and that's pretty cool. We take n derivatives. You can see that these derivatives are pretty easy to take because we're just taking the derivative of s to the power. We divide by n factorial and we get the probability that um, x equals n. Why is it factorial? Well, you can kind of see, like, if you're taking the derivative of s to the fourth, you get 4 times s cubed, which, derived again, becomes 12 times s squared. Derived again, that becomes 24s. So this 24 term is really just four factorial, right? Because you're deriving, you're, deriving, you're taking the exponent, you're taking the exponent, putting it down, the next exponent, putting it down, you're multiplying by one, you know, the same number minus one, and you basically get that, that factorial. So this is a very cool result because again, it's easy, very easy to derive this, and you can very quickly get uh, the probabilities just by, by doing that. And then the last cool property that we're gonna talk about, so property three, Three. Um, what happens when we plug in one to this? So if we plug in one, right? Let's go back to where we originally wrote it out. We plug in s equals one. In this case, one to the zero is one. So we get p of x equals zero plus uh, here one to the one is also one. So I get plus p of x equals one. Let's fly here. Uh, 1 squared is also 1, so I get plus p of x equals 2. Uh, basically, all the terms, all the s terms are going to go to 1, and I have this p of x equals 0 plus p of x equals 1 plus p, et cetera, et cetera. And that, if you sum them all up, equals 1. Um, it has to, right? Because, you know, 
uh, if I'm adding up the probability that X takes on any value from zero to infinity, that's the entire support of, of X, right? It's just kind of the number of cells at time T that has to equal one. So similar to property one, where um, plugging in zero must equal the probability that X equals zero, plugging in one must equal one, and that's just a way to check that you have a valid uh, PGF. So in this case, in this uh, video, we just introduced PGF, talk about some cool properties. I think one and three, you know, one is kind of useful if you want to find really quickly the probability that x equals zero. But one and three are more diagnostic. They tell you if your PGF is legit, if it's, you know, if it actually works. And property two can be very useful in finding uh, probabilities from, actually generating the probabilities from a PGF. But all in all, this is kind of just a step in our journey towards exploring branching processes more. In the next video, um, we're going to talk more about uh, how PGFs can actually help us explore branching processes. So we'll see you next time.